worship, um, we're going to just do, uh, do Kumbaya, asking the Lord to come and be present with us. Um, he doesn't need an invitation, but sometimes we need to invite him into our hearts, don't we? Here we go. Kumbaya. this morning as we begin our worship service and fill the Holy Spirit in our hearts, Lord, that we may hear and listen, we may be present, even though there's extraneous things going on, cars going by, airplanes flying overhead. Um, it is great to be in your creation, to experience the wind, to look out at friends, to feel the warmth of the sun in our bodies that create warmth. That warmth, Lord, we know is your love for us. Please be with us, Lord. In your name we pray together. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. How's everybody doing? It's good to have everyone here today. It's good to be able to worship with you on today outside in God's country. So uh, at this time we will have our call to worship. Those who are able, I invite you to please stand. To know the warmth of love. To have the assurance that someone cares. To be confident of our work. To be bold to love in return washed over with grace to be accepted as we are this, this is, is a, to know a bit of God. God let us worship our God please take out your song sheets the first song is all hail the power of Jesus name amen
chain because of his awesome name.
Gracious Lord, as we come together for worship today, we ask that you be with us in our time of worship. We pray that you grant us your strength as we prepare for yet another week. Be with us today so that we may continue to be reflections of your light and your love. May your will be done in our lives. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord, taught his disciples to pray, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth and heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for us. Amen. Some of you might have an extra song sheet. There's some people that came right close to 1030 and don't have a song sheet. If you wouldn't mind, if you've got somebody with you. Oh, Dawn has some song sheets. If you need one, would you raise your hand and Dawn will come. salvation all 
have my story in them. If you think of the theme, uh, the song we just sang, All My Hope Is In Jesus, were three people's perspective on how God saved them. And people tell them in their stories. This next song, Victory In Jesus, starts with, I heard an old, old story. It's because we share our faith with others that they come to know God and what a saving God he is. We all have a story to tell. Let's tell the old, old story we have heard. I heard an old, old story How my Savior came from glory He threw his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood verses 6 through 10 and then 14 through 17. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him whether we are at home, in the body, or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone away, and the new is here. Praise the Lord. If you would join me and stand in the affirmation of faith, I'm going to do it the way they do it when people join the church, which is I'm going to ask it as a question, and you respond if you believe I do. Okay? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, dead, and buried. Do you believe that in the third day he rose from the dead? 
he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And people said together, Amen. You may be seated. At this time, as we prepare for our morning offering, let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for your grace and your goodness to all of us. And we thank you, Lord, that we're able to assemble here this morning. We ask your blessing on this offering, Lord, each person who give and those who have a mind to give, whether it's used here or in a land far away. We ask your blessings upon it. To Christ our Lord, we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you to those who contributed uh, for the food bank and the Urban Promise mission uh, opportunities. If you have time next week, we'll do the same thing, especially for the Urban Promise, because they're going to be giving uh, starting camps up, and uh, we support that as much as we can. Um, I will invite Kathleen up. She's going to give us a family moment, and then I'm going to need some uh, helpers when I teach a VBS song that's uh, for Adventures on an Island. Good morning. Today, I'd like to talk with you about Vacation Bible School. But first, I want to introduce a new friend of mine. His name is Beacon. Beacon says hi, everybody. You say hi back? Thanks. It makes Beacon feel really awesome to be welcome. Hey, Beacon, have you ever been part of a Vacation Bible School? You have? How about everybody else out there? Have you been part of a Vacation Bible School? Maybe as a camper, or as a helper, or as a teacher. Raise your hand. Wow, Beacon, there's a lot of people out here that's been part of Vacation Bible School. Isn't that great? Yep. Hey, Beacon, let me ask you a question. Do you think I should talk with the folks about what Vacation Bible School is, and what our opportunity here at Hocus and UMC is? What do you think? Should I do that? Yep. All right. You know, I tell you what, I'll do that for you. Um, Vacation Bible School is an opportunity in the summer for teens and children and adults and church members and everybody to come together to put on an awesome time in the community and here at Hocassin. And we invite anybody that would like to be part of it. Kids have an opportunity to learn about Jesus. Adults have an opportunity to be creative and teach children about Jesus and to help kids grow closer to God and to build a relationship with Jesus. What do you think of that? I think that's great. Okay, believe it or not, this guy's going to be talking a lot this summer. If you come back to our VBS, which is June 27th, 28th, 29th, and 30th, from 6 o'clock to 8.30 p.m., that's a Sunday through a Wednesday, so you still can go down to the beach on the first, guys and gals. We really hope, and Beacon and I really wish that you would join us on, a, on an adventure on an island to go on a quest to experience God's light through the different Bible stories, activities, and activities, and, and fun uh, games and activities that we do. We really hope you join us. What do you think? Did I cover everything? He wants you to know that he will be there on the 27th. And we also want to remind you that we will be having a cookout at 530 and anyone that would like to join us for a burger or a hot dog, including church members, please come and join us. We hope you can come. Uh, this guy says, bye. Bye-bye. Have a good one. OK, I'm going to need some kids. I need seven children or, or adults. It doesn't matter. I'm a big kid at heart. This is one of the VBS songs that the kids will be singing um, come June 26th that I thought it'd be nice if we all learned it. It's about the creation story. It begins the Bible and the book of Genesis. And so come on up. Come across here because I'm going to sing behind you. Okay. All right. Here we go. You can all hold up your fingers when I say day one, day two, day three. 
day four. All right, so you can be active. I'm going to teach you the, the chorus to Creator of the Universe. And kids, if you, once you learn it, would you sing with me? Okay? It goes like this. Creator of the universe, we give you all the praise. We join with cre creation, singing worthy is your name. For all that you have done, for everything you've made. Creator of the universe, we give you all the praise. Creator of the universe, we give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. Okay, that's the chorus, all right? So you hear it. All right, here I go. Day one, you created the heavens and the earth, made the daylight and called the dark night. Day two, you separated the waters from the sky. On the third day, you made the land dry. You said it was good. God, you are so good. Ready? Creator. Creator of the universe, we give you all the praise. We join with the creation, singing worthy is your name. For all that you have done, everything that you have made. Creator of the universe, we give you all the praise. Creator of the universe, we give you all the praise. Here we go. Day four, you created the sun and moon and stars. All of them declare how awesome you are. Day five, sea animals and birds of the trees. Day six, land animals and human beings. You said it was good. God, you are so good. Create. Creator of the universe, we give you all the praise. We join in with creation, singing worthy is your name. For all that you have done, everything that you have made. Creator of the universe, we give you all the praise. Creator of the universe, we give you all the praise. Okay, now this is a little chant, okay? you're into rap. If we stay silent, the rocks will cry out. So we won't be silent. We'll sing and we'll shout with me. If we, if we stay silent, the rocks will cry out. So we won't be silent. We'll sing and we'll shout. Again, if we stay silent, the rocks will cry out. So we won't be silent. We'll sing and we'll shout the chorus. Creator of the universe, we give you all the praise. We join with all creation, singing worthy is your name. For all that you have done, everything that you have made. Creator of the universe, we give you all the praise. Creator of the universe, we give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. One more time. We give you all the praise. On day seven. God rested. <laughs> God rested on the seventh day, right? Okay, thank you kids for helping. Uh, just put your numbers up here. Thank you. Give them a hand. Well, our scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Acts. Acts 16, 25 to 31. And it reads, And about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison was shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came off. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, 
he drew a sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we're all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. And I want to use for subject preaching just a few minutes, what must I do to be saved? Let's pray. Gracious God, as we come now to this point in this service, I ask that you would anoint me to preach your word and anoint these who are here to hear and receive of your word. Help me to decrease and you increase. And I would pray that you would have these who are here not to hear and see Vern Bryant, but help them to hear and to see Jesus Christ. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. And everyone said amen and amen. Well, believe it or not, we live in a world where we are making decisions every day. Think about that. From the time you get up in the morning until the time you go to bed at night, you're constantly making decisions. What to wear, what to eat, you know, what to drink, what TV programs to watch, what movies to watch, you know, all kinds of decisions. We are constantly making decisions whether we realize it or not. However, life is filled with many questions. You know, there are all kinds of questions throughout life. You know, some that are answered and some that aren't answered. I always admire people uh, who are archaeologists because they seek to solve mysteries and riddles of life. They, they go about and they dig and they, they look and try, to, and try to investigate the who, what, when, where, and why. However, the most important question that human beings will ever be able to ask, that is, what must I do to be saved? Have you ever thought about that? Jesus spoke about that all the time when he said, what does it profit if a person gains the whole world but forfeits his or her soul? So that's one of the most important questions that we will ever have to answer. If we are to be saved, point number one, we must see our need. Humanity is lost, folks. You just look around and you see humanity is just, we've seen humanity at its best, and we've seen humanity at its worst. But humanity, when you look at the news and you hear, whether it's on your smartphone or tablet or on TV, you see that humanity is lost and that humanity needs a savior. And that only comes through Jesus Christ. You know, the jailer saw his need. He saw his need for a savior. And Jesus was able to save him through using Paul and Silas. And we have many needs in life, but our greatest need is the need of Christ. And when Christ comes into our life, Christ makes a difference in more ways than we can ever dream or imagine. Sometimes in life we think we have things all figured out, don't we? You know, we make our plans and we go about our plans and we do our things, but it's not until we come to have a personal relationship with Christ that life becomes more meaningful and more fulfilling. And we discover our greatest need in the fact that we need a Savior. So first, if we are to be saved, we must see our need to be saved. We can't make it in this world by ourselves. Second, if we are to be saved, we must know that we can be. All we have to do is believe. 
We, we believe in a lot of things, don't we? We believe that when we leave this service today, we can get in our car, our car is going to start up and take us to our next destination. We believe that when we go on a vacation, whether we fly or whether we take a cruise ship, that we're going to get to where we're going. We believe that when we step into an elevator, whether it's in this elevator here or in the building somewhere, it's going to take us to where we need to go. Here, it takes you to the second floor. But it, we, we step in the elevator, we're just going to believe it's going to take us to our floor. We believe those things. But when it comes to Christ, sometimes we have trouble believing. Why? Because the world can beat, us, beat up on us pretty bad, can it? And make us feel as if we're lower than low. But if we believe in the power and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, all things are possible to the one who believes. If we just believe, if we just have faith the size of a mustard seed, the scripture tells us, we can say to that mountain to be removed, Jesus said, and it'll happen. So in, in order to be saved, we must believe. We must believe that Christ is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. And Christ can make a difference if we believe. How do we come to believe? We take time to read and to pray. We take time to, to talk to other believers. We take time to meditate on God's word. We take time to listen to God speaking to us. So many times when we pray, we pray and we're like, Lord, I need, I want, Lord, help, amen. And then we're on our way. But take time to pause and say in your prayer, Lord, I'm done speaking now. So Lord, now speak to me, speak to my heart, speak to my mind. And I dare you to do it, because if you, if you do it, he will. And it makes so much difference in our lives. So, in order to be saved, we also must see our need. We must also know that we can do, and that comes by believing. And then if we are to be saved, we must respond to Jesus Christ in our life. Simple as that. Life isn't hard. People make life hard. I always say that. You know, it, it's people. You know, it, not, there's nothing wrong with the world. It's the people who mess the world up who can either work for good or for bad. You take, for instance, this parking lot here. If no one traveled on this parking lot and cared for this lot, and let's say it was abandoned for about a year and a half to two years, eventually it will be overgrown by grass and shrub and everything else. Same with a house or, or, or a building. You know, life isn't difficult. People make life difficult, but Jesus makes life manageable. We can do all things through Christ. And life becomes manageable with Christ. And we know that with Jesus Christ, we can do all things. It doesn't mean that we're not going to have problems. It doesn't mean that we're not going to have burdens. It doesn't mean that things will always go our way. But when things aren't perfect and we're not on the mountaintop and we find ourselves down in the valley, we know that Christ is walking with us even during the most difficult part of the journey. And that's wonderful to know that Christ never gives up on us. We give up on us. Others may give up on us, but Christ never gives up on us. We must want to be saved. We must want the Savior to abide in our life. And God will not force himself on anyone. It's a choice. Just like anything else, it's a choice. We make that choice to accept Christ. We repent, we accept, and we believe. And you know when we come to accept and believe, we discover what our calling is in this life. What is our calling? To be the light to others. We encounter others on this journey who may be struggling and you may be the person who can share the light in their life. You may be the person who can 
offer a word of hope. You know, I don't believe in scare tactics when it comes to the gospel. You know, some preachers believe in scaring people into accepting Christ. You know, that's pretty bad because if you scare people into doing something, chances are they're not going to stay. But, like the scripture says, he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. If we diligently seek the Lord, we definitely will find him. And if we find him and accept him, it will make all the difference in our life. What must I do to be saved? May God help us on our journey. Amen. Okay, would you please stand as we do our closing songs? This is a new one for the band called My Story. And, you know, to be beacons of light in the world, as Pastor Vern says, we have to share our story. We can't be afraid to tell people, you know, what has made a difference in my life for me. It's sharing our story. This song, My Story, is a sharing, but it's telling how God's kindness and goodness made a difference in their life. Uh, sing along as you uh, pick up on the uh, melody. Uh, as I said, it's a new one for us today. My Story. If I told you my story, you would hear hope that wouldn't let go. And if I told you my story, you would hear love that never gave up. And if I told you my story, you would hear life, but it wasn't mine. If I should speak, then let it be of the grace that is greater than all my sin. But when justice was served, and when mercy wins of the kindness of Jesus that draws me in Oh, to tell you my story is to tell of Him If I told you my story You would hear victory over the enemy and if i told you my story you would hear freedom that was one for me and if it told you my story you would hear life overcome the grave then let it be of the grace that is greater than all my sin. Of when justice was served and when mercy wins. Of the kindness of Jesus that draws me in. Oh, to tell you my story is to tell. assurance Jesus is mine oh what a foretaste of glory divine heirs of salvation purchase of God born of his spirit washed in his blood this is your story this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. 
perfect submission. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. Whose story? This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior. I am my Savior, and happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with And all my sin, and when justice was served, and when mercy wins, all the kindness of Jesus that draws me in. Oh, to tell you my story is to tell of Him. Oh, to tell you my story is to tell of Him. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Praise the Lord. May that be your song in your heart this week. And it is a blessing to note that Anne Cloud, who was serving her country, our country, for the last six months, has returned. So we praise the Lord for her safe return in our midst. Well, we certainly do thank you, you, and you for coming out today. And if all hearts and minds are clear, let us look to the Lord and be this. Go forward this day knowing that you are loved and may the love and the peace of Christ go with you. Amen. Amen. Go with God. We're just going to sing that last song while you're uh, talking. <laughs> Visiting. For the grace that is greater than all my sin justice was served and when mercy wins of the kindness of Jesus that draws me in oh to tell you my story is to tell of him one more time oh the grace that is greater than all my sin of when justice was served and when mercy wins of the kindness of Jesus that draws me in oh to tell you my story is to tell of him this is my story this is my 